Hello, this is Paul Cockshot again. I've been taking some time off from the videos on Towards a New Socialism because I've had to start work on writing a new book and I've been doing a fair bit of software to validate the ideas that are going into the new book. And in the last video I released, I was evaluating the programming language Julia as a platform for developing this software. I can now say that I'm reasonably confident the methods I'm using are sound and I have released a version of the software on um, SourceForge with the title New Harmony with Julia and this video is the first of two explaining the economic and mathematical theory behind the planning software that I've released. Uh, as I say, it's on SourceForge and it's New Harmony with Julia and you can download the software. Uh, because it's Julia, it's uh, all uncompiled and you run it in the Julia interactive um, just-in-time compiler. Now, there is within the folder you would download a detailed theoretical account of the maths, which is given in about a dozen pages of PDF. And this is a brief summary of those uh, dozen pages are what I'm going to be giving in these lectures. And there are two example programs harmony2.jl which illustrates the schedule for capital investment in multi-year plans and it illustrates it with a scalar capital with one capital good which is obviously unrealistic for a real economy but it's just to isolate the issue of scheduling time investment for five-year plans then there is a full version CV, CSV plan .jl. CSV because it um, reads in spreadsheets in CSV format and it combines the capital investment schedule technique shown in the first example with Leontiev's techniques for planning. Now Leontiev was a Russian economist. He was a Menshevik, not a Bolshevik, um, but he was working on statistics for the Russian economy in the 1920s, but um, being accused of Menshevizing idealism, he left the country and continued working in America. But the important thing about his work is that he allowed the planning problem to be treated as a branch of matrix analysis and subsequently had a huge impact on Marxian economics. Even though he'd left the, the USSR, his ideas uh, were very widely used subsequently, um, both in Japanese Marxist writers like Morishima and Okishima, Okishio, and um, also if you read the work that Langer, the Polish socialist economist who was vice president of Poland, um, was writing in the 50s, you see that he was very strongly influenced by Leontiev's techniques as well. Now, I'm going to illustrate this with summary input-output tables for the European Union, which I include the CSV files of these in the um, folder that is on the SourceForge project. I've had to go through the full, the, the published Eurostat summary tables and I've reduced them slightly. I have um, reduced them in two ways. I, they were highly aggregated to start out with, but I've reduced them to four industries or four economic sectors for demonstration purposes and for testing software. I've also regularized the layout into a more Marxian form. And one particular point which 
um, is worth looking at is how one deals with foreign trade if one's doing Marxist planning. Now, those of you who've looked at my other video lectures will be familiar with the general principle of an input-output table. They're column-oriented, so a column designates an industry producing an output given at the bottom. The rows indicate sources of supply or types of supply. So this highlighted cell here is the how much of the output of agriculture, which because it's in the agriculture row, is used in the in industrial and energy sector. So it shows that 173 billion euros of agricultural product were used in European industry in 2000. And six, and it produced an output. Oh, if, the, if we can hide that, wait for that to go for a moment. It produced an output of six hundred and eighty-five billion euro. No, is it more than that? Um, six point eight trillion euros. Um, yeah, six point eight trillion euros of output were produced by the industrial sector. Large numbers here. Uh, on the other hand, this cell here shows how much of the output of the industrial sector was used up in agriculture. And there it is, 77 billion euros of uh, industrial output went into agriculture. And this is where we're starting to look at um, foreign trade. Now, I have reorganized the published tables into a regular matrix format. Published tables treat imports as a second table and then have an export column. I have in integrated the imports here uh, at the cost of some aggregation. So this row here, labelled foreign trade, is the imports used in each sector. So it says that 635 billion euros of imports were used in the industrial sector in the EU in 2006. And on the other hand, the industrial sector produced 967 billion of exports. So the foreign trade column should be read as exports. The foreign, foreign trade row should be read as imports. Now from this, Leontief shows you can derive something called the what he called the A matrix. And this is laid out the same way as the IO table, except that each cell AIJ says what fraction of a euro of commodity or, or sector I was used to make one euro's worth of output in sector J. So these are all small numbers because they're fractions. And um, the bottom row is the payment to labour that had to be made in order to do this. So that this A matrix is a very basic concept now in modern Marxist economics. And I'm going to illustrate how you use the A matrix. Suppose we specify the gross output as a column vector O. And then the matrix product A dot O evaluates to the vector of intermediate products needed to make the output mix O. And we will define this as R. And it, the resources, the intermediate resources used in the economy are A dot O. That's a very nice, simple mathematical relationship comes up from um, the Ontiev's analysis. So I'm going to illustrate that with with Julia. And there's the um, A matrix that I've just obtained typed into Julia here. And there's the output, which is the actual gross output of the EU in 2006. 
So let's actually see if we can activate this, do it live. So we will first define A in Julia. We're going to use linear algebra. So I'll put that in first. I mistyped using linear algebra. So there's A, I'll say using linear algebra again. When uh, I've used capital there, this is the hazard of doing any live demos. Um, okay, so I've loaded A, and I've said I'm going to use the linear algebra library, and I'll put in the the output matrix, the output vector. Okay, it's got the output vector. And let's now evaluate A times O. And that gives us the a vector of intermediate products. Let's just move this away again, out the way. So there's the, the vector of intermediate products, which if we check the published EU tables, which I haven't, can't put up on the screen because they're too big, it matches the actual intermediate products used in the EU. Now, you can also go from this to final consumption. Since the final consumption is obviously going to be the output O minus A dot R, A dot O, which is the intermediate products used. So final product is O minus A dot O. Um, for Julia, you use the, 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 the asterisk symbol for, for um, multiplication of matrices. If we run this, though, we get an error. If we load that in and run it, we get an error. I'm not going to bother doing it live. Now, why have we got this error? What's wrong? The problem is that the A matrix wasn't square. It had five columns and six rows. Why did it have five columns and six rows? Because it had four internal columns for industrial sectors in the EU. Um, agriculture, industry, construction and services. But it had six uh, uh, plus a uh, a fifth one, which was the um, foreign trade sector, but it had only um, it had six rows because it had the labour used as well. And we end up trying to do something that you can only do with a square matrix, with a six by five matrix. And I found in developing the planning software in Julia, I kept being caught out by. Um, these runtime errors. A, a, a typed language would have detect, hopefully, would have detected this earlier. But it doesn't matter. You find this, and you, it actually points to a real economic phenomena. We've got this labour input row, but no labour output column. And that's because this is capitalism, not slavery. So there's no industry producing labour power. How do you deal with this? You deal with it by creating a dummy labour power column. Or all zeros, um, which says there's essentially you say there's gross product, zero gross production of labor power by the capitalist sector. And if you run that, you can then get a meaningful result. You get positive consumption of commodities by the domestic sector and a negative final consumption of labor power by the domestic economy. So the amount of labor power is shown as negative because the domestic economy, household economy, doesn't consume labor, but gives up labor in return for 
a stream of consumption. Now, this is not strictly equivalent to looking at the the wage bundle because the EU accounts don't separate out consumption by social class. So this includes some capitalist consumption in in the in the vector. Now the nice thing about the Leontiev um, technique is you can then work backwards because this is what you need to do when you're constructing a plan. Let's just go through the algebra here. You've got the total output is the intermediate products plus the final product. And thus by reorganizing, we can say the final product is the total output minus the intermediate products. And we can therefore get what the final product is as the as we're factorizing this out. So when you factorize out, you get the identity matrix stands in the same position as the identity uh, element of the, the, the numbers. One would stand in ordinary algebra. So we have the identity matrix minus A times O equals F. If we then divide through by I minus A, we get output, the output vector, is equal to the inverse of I minus A times F. And the important point here is, and this is what you need to, for proper planning, you do, can drive the gross output you're going to have to produce for any given pattern of final consumption. This means that you can set plan targets in terms of net consumption, rather than setting plan targets in terms of gross consumption, as the Soviet system did. So you, this way, you set the, the your, your target in terms of net outputs. From that, you derive as a secondary factor the gross outputs that you would have to meet, have to meet that net output target. And the key point is this piece of algebra of Leontiev's. In Julia, you, you have to do a wee bit of fiddling around, um, make sure that the negative labor quantity in the F that we just obtained is removed. And you evaluate um, multiplying by an inverse matrix in Julia is done by that single operator, a backslash, which sort of looks like a divide operator. And if you apply that to the final consumption in the EU, that you, you, you obtain the actual final consumption of the EU, feed it through in Julia and multiply it out like that, you obtain to within rounding errors the original O. There are some rounding errors because I've only printed um, the actual figures in the tables to the about the first four digits of accuracy. Now this is all standard stuff. It's been standard Marxian Leontiev economics since the 1950s. However, it's a level of Marxian economics that only, it tends to be only professional economists study. Um, most militants who study Marxist economics read Capital and they don't read the, the more modern stuff. But as I say, it's all well-known stuff that was been known since the 50s. And the next problem, which I'm going to go into um, in the, in the follow-up video is how I link up this piece of Leontiev algebra over a sequence of years to build a single five-year plan. And I think I've already had enough in this one video. I tend to um, leave them to between 20, 25 uh, slides. The only thing to note here is that Julia 
just like using Octave or Euler makes it very easy to express these calculations interactively. But once you start going to multi-year plans, the calculations become much more complicated and it's not so easy to express these as uh, simple interactive um, console operations. They become things which you actually have to run a, a full algorithm to uh, evaluate and I'll explain that in the next lecture.